car is really disgusting. Uh, there is a jack under it right now because I just got the exhaust done and got this front fender extension in primer. And I'm going to spray some black on it. The car is going to get painted at some point, so I'm not really worried with, you know, just being this fender and just spraying back over it. But, uh, yeah, the hood's on. Like I said, this one up here, for whatever reason, it used to fit before, but now it won't grab on what it's supposed to grab on for some reason. Which, by looking at it, the bracket's actually at an angle under there, so I think this side right here needs to be pushed down a little bit, and then it should, because right there it kind of tries to grab but I can't get it to, to screw fast. So, just a little minor stuff like that. But like I said, everything is buttoned up. The exhaust now is shooting out the front end, which, once the car is back sitting on the ground, you'll never hopefully see that. I mean, it's just like the other side. So, hopefully that'll save me from getting hassled too much, other than it being loud but just cruising it shouldn't be too bad but yeah there's the other side of the exhaust um now that that's all buttoned up the shifter is in it and does work uh, i'm gonna probably well yeah i'm gonna clean the interior obviously because it's about as bad as the outside but i do want to get different front seats the back seat isn't original either, but they're in really good shape, and I kind of like the older style seats with the red piping. So, I actually had the front seats to match, and a long time ago, swapped them out for these 93 Cobra seats that aren't in the best shape, as you can tell. This one, the driver's seat, is worse than the passenger side. But, yeah, I swapped them out when I was young. I didn't like the seats that were in it for whatever reason back then. And I bought these and then sold those, so they're long gone. So I may try to find something that matches the back. Or just go with some kind of reclining race seat for the front. Something nice. But we'll see what happens. I may just put try to find the ones that match and put those back in, like I said. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, the heat works and everything. I did put a scan gauge in that I had in multiple other cars, which my manual gauges are not hooked up, and I might not hook them up because this does read everything off the factory sensors because I did wire in the OBD2 port. And, yeah, it reads water temp, oil pressure, all that. So I may actually get rid of these and clean it up, make it a little less race car ish haven't got the tack to work yet apparently to go to an ls i need a resistor and another power wire so i'm gonna buy a resistor and hopefully that'll work if not i gotta figure out what's going on because it worked before but it's not communicating with the ls for whatever reason and yeah like i said just really gotta clean up in here it's kind of filthy dirty nasty there's still parts and stuff laying everywhere from previous builds but uh yeah scan gauge makes it kind of cool i am gonna since obviously the speedometer isn't gonna work anymore eventually i may go with a uh, florida 5.0 cluster with all auto meter gauges but for now i'm just gonna use the scan gauge and i'm gonna mount my cheap gps that i don't use for anything anymore right here just for a uh, speedometer and I guess I could still use it as a GPS if I'm ever traveling somewhere and that way I don't have to use my phone but yeah I'm gonna get that mounted in here and should be good to go there but like I said really I haven't there's not really much to do to it so I haven't really worked on it recently and like I said I've been busy I've been helping other people out and just kind of taking a little break, you know, getting it done in a week. Just kind of burned me out from working on stuff for a little bit. 
but like I said, I've been helping other people. It isn't really anything to do on this. I had uh, the one transmission line was dripping very, very little. So I got under there and tightened that up a little more. It was a little loose. I guess I thought it was tight enough, but I guess it wasn't. But other than that, nothing seems to be leaking. Um, I haven't put power steering fluid in it yet. Because of the exhaust being out the front, I had to kind of smash the reservoir in quite a bit. I'm hoping that it didn't knock a hole in it, but it's not whining or anything. There's, I guess, a little bit in there, enough that it's not whining, so I'm not really concerned. And with having super skinny front tires on it, it's not really that bad without power steering. So I may just say screw it and not run power steering, or I might throw some fluid in it and see if it holds and go from there. It may work, it may not, who knows. That's really the least of my concerns. But, uh, yeah, I don't really think there's anything else I've got done to it, other than, like I said, just drove it around in the yard, make sure the tranny pulled, made sure everything was okay, let it warm up and everything, make sure nothing was leaking, there was no, nothing weird going on. Motor sounds fine. Seems to run great. I mean, it fires right up. Transmission goes into all the gears that it should go into. Um, that is another thing. I was told I could get away with using a stock automatic shifter out of a Fox Body Mustang. And that was a ton of work. I mean, that was by far the the most difficult thing with this entire swap was just getting that to work. Getting the bracket mounted underneath and making sure it was going into the gears and blah, blah, blah. And the only way we could get it to work was the detents for the factory gears on the shifter, whatever you want to call it, they aren't right. So that's why I have it drawn on with paint pen for now. And you can't really pull it and let it lock itself in. You have to hold the button and slide it through to whatever gear you want. And then you can let go, but it won't go into... It'll go into the gear on the transmission, but it won't go into the gear on the shifter. It won't, like, lock like they do. But it's not really a big deal. But I don't really understand why multiple people have done this, but it didn't work for me. I'm not really sure what was going on, if the cable was worn out, or maybe it isn't the right shifter. I'm not sure. But like I said, it does go into park reverse neutral drive, which is really all I need. You can't hit any of the 1, 2, 3 manually, but... I don't really foresee me needing that. It's an automatic for a reason. I don't plan on manually shifting it unless I were to go to a manual valve body. And at that point, it's going to have a aftermarket shifter in it anyways. So for now, this will work. This is what I wanted. I wanted it to look original-ish. So, you know, when I'm driving around with the hood on, obviously, you won't really be able to tell that it's an LS. And by looking inside... You, it looks like a factory automatic shifter. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my gauges up here yet. I might hook the wideband up just for the future, you know, when I go for tuning and getting stuff done. It just makes it easier. Or if I decide to try to tune it myself in the future, like I said, or what. The boost gauge really serves me zero purpose anymore. It's only filling a hole right now, because if I pull it out, then there's just going to be an ugly hole right there. So, unless I find something else to put in there, that's probably just going to stay. And, yeah. Or I might just get rid of all three of them and build a new uh, panel around the radio. I don't know yet. I haven't really decided on that, and like I said, that's not really too big of a concern right now. Uh, if I do decide to run the wideband, I just got to pull one of the exhaust manifolds off and drill it and weld a bung fast and then just throw my wideband O2 in it and it'll be good to go because it is all still wired up and everything. 
I need to get rid of some wires over here that I took the ignition box out that was for my old setup that I no longer needed. That will now be going on Rodney's Dakota because it was an ignition box that he kind of needed anyways, and plus it had a two-step built in, which he did or does want to uh, run on his setup. So it helped him out and it got it out of here because, like I said, I didn't need it anymore. So I need to pull those wires back through and get rid of them. But for now, they're just chilling right there. Um, yeah, really, that's... That's about it. Haven't, like I said, haven't really done much. Haven't had much to do on it. I do need to get, uh, decide on tires here shortly and get a new set of rears. The fronts are brand new, obviously, as you can tell. They've never even been driven on, really. They still have the stickers on them. But I probably will go with a a radial pro, a Mickey Thompson on the back, or maybe go back with the Hoosier drag radial. I don't really know yet. Just depends what I want to do or decide to do. They're both outstanding tires. Definitely going to be some kind of radial on it. I'm not going to run a full blown slick. There's really no need to anyways with an automatic. So it'll get some kind of radial put on it for street driving. And I eventually will probably also buy, uh, a set of street wheels for it because if I do decide to drive this somewhere, you know, a couple hours, I don't want to just wear out a set of radials and I'd like to not have the skinnies and stuff on it in case, or radials for that matter, in case we hit rain or anything like that. So I will buy some kind of street setup for it just for long distances or, you know, whatever. I might buy 93 Cobra wheels. I've always kind of liked them, and you can get them fairly cheap for a street wheel on it. But, uh, yeah, really, I think that's about it. Don't want to keep rambling and make this video entirely too long like I usually do. But that's, that's about it. So, probably going to cut this off here, get this painted get it back off the jack and hopefully uh, get to working on something else here shortly and either more updates on this or somebody else's and get some more videos pumping out here. It is nice out today, but it's going to be probably the last day for a little while and it's supposed to get pretty cold again. So there ain't no telling, but hopefully the warm weather's going to arrive shortly and actually get some exciting videos out. But like I said, that's going to be it for now. As always, please comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends. I'd greatly appreciate it, and we'll see you guys on the next one.